Hey everyone, welcome back to my series on Terraform Basics. In today's episode, we're going to investigate provider plugins. What are they? How do you add one? And how do you configure one? So let's jump right in. If you haven't already watched my video on Terraform core components, I'd recommend doing that first, since I talk a bit about where provider plugins fit into the Terraform architecture. But to summarize, the Terraform core binary needs a way to talk to all the various services, clouds, and providers that it supports. It does this through the use of provider plugins. A provider plugin is an executable binary that implements the Terraform plugin protocol. It creates a, a layer of abstraction between the provider's API and the constructs Terraform expects to work with. Terraform core doesn't know how the provider APIs work. It speaks the language of resources and data sources. The provider plugin is responsible for translating between the two. It tells Terraform what attributes a resource has, when a resource needs to be recreated versus updated in place, and it handles queries to the provider APIs to get the current state of a resource or a data source. Plugins are pretty darn important. When you write a Terraform configuration, you need to initialize it before Terraform can interpret it. Among other things, the initialization process is responsible for downloading the provider plugins. This is done by running Terraform in it. Now, how does Terraform know where to get the provider plugins and which ones are in the configuration? You can explicitly tell Terraform which providers are required, and we'll see how to do that in a moment. But to make things easy to get started, Terraform will automatically look for provider, resource, or data source blocks in your configuration and try to find the corresponding provider plugin on the public Terraform registry. In the case of provider blocks, it looks at the block label of the provider and uses that to search the registry. For resources and data sources, the type of resource or data source always starts with the name of the provider. So Terraform will use the provider name to search the registry for the provider plugin. Now that's the default behavior. But if you want to explicitly tell Terraform what version of a provider to get and where to get it from, you'll set that in the the Terraform block. The Terraform block is a configuration block that is used to configure Terraform itself. One of the nested blocks supported by the Terraform block is the required providers block. This block is used to explicitly define the providers required by the configuration and where to get them from. Inside the required providers block, you'll have one or more map entries. The key of the map is the name of the provider, and the value is another map with two keys in it, source and version. The source the source key is the location of the provider plugin, and the version key is the version of the provider plugin to download. Now, technically, you don't have to use the actual provider name, but that's kind of an outlier case, and we don't need to investigate that in a Terraform Basics video. If you need more details, they're down in the description. If the source is the Terraform public registry, you can use a shorthand syntax that assumes the source is the registry. You can also use a fully qualified source URL, which is useful if you're using a private registry or a local file system. The version argument can be set to a specific version or a range of versions using version constraints. I'll include a link down in the description to the version constraint documentation, but it's pretty intuitive. Once you've added your required plugins, the next thing to do is configure the provider. Most providers require some amount of configuration to operate. The AWS provider needs a region, the Azure provider needs a features block, and the VMware provider needs a vCenter address. The configuration will vary depending on the provider, but the process for configuring a provider is the same. It starts with the provider configuration block. This creates an instance of the provider from the plugin. The keyword is provider, and the only block label is the name of the provider. Inside the block will be the arguments and blocks specific specific to the provider. There are a few meta arguments that are common to all providers, and one such is the alias meta arguments. If you need to create multiple instances of the same provider, you can do so with the alias meta argument. This is useful if you need to work with multiple vCenters or separate AWS regions. A provider block without an alias is the default provider instance, and there can only be one default instance of a provider. All subsequent provider blocks for the same provider 
provider have to have an alias. If you don't include a provider block in your configuration or give all of your provider blocks an alias, Terraform will automatically create a default instance of the provider for you. And that can lead to some weird errors. So I recommend defining a default provider instance for each provider you use. The provider alias can be referenced in data sources, resources, and modules to decide which instance of the provider will be used. But that's something we'll cover in a future video. Now you might be wondering, how do I know what the source and version should be for a provider? How do I know what arguments are required in the provider block? How do I authenticate to a given provider like Azure or AWS or Google Cloud? And the answer is to read the docs. If we take a look at the documentation for the Azure RM provider, on the very first page, there is a section that shows you the Terraform block you should add to your configuration with the version set to the latest version of the provider. Also within the documentation will be the arguments that are required for the provider block. This will typically include how to authenticate to the provider and any other configuration that is required. This is also where you can find the data sources and resources for the provider. Honestly, I spend a lot of time in the documentation, I'd recommend that you do the same. To summarize, provider plugins are the way that Terraform Core communicates with the various services, clouds, and providers it supports. Without the provider plugins, Terraform would not be very useful. Terraform tries to find the right provider plugins for you from the public registry, but it's recommended that you explicitly define the providers required by your configuration using the nested required providers block inside of the Terraform block. You can specify both the source and the version of the provider plugin to download. Instances of the provider plugin are created using the provider block. You can create multiple instances of the provider using the alias meta argument. Now that's going to do it for today's Terraform basics. Thank you so much for watching. If you think I've earned it, please subscribe to the channel and you know maybe let a friend know about it. If you're looking for another video to watch, I think my Terraform core components video would be a good follow-up to this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time in Terraform basics.